for being here. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank God for all of our leaders, those that are present, those that are abroad on tonight. Uh, going, going in a little bit on our discussion, uh, I hope that we're going to be a little conversational tonight. So if you're watching online, uh, I encourage you to comment in real time ask questions real time so we can include you in the discussion. Uh, we're going to share a little bit about a conversation of sanctification. Uh, we, we in churchology uh, always say, I'm saved and sanctified and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and I've seen a lot of people say that. Uh, but I wonder if many of us know exactly what that means or do we mean the same thing that the Bible means when we say it? Uh, are, are we... I've always asked the question to make sure that people know, first of all, are you saved? Amen. Uh, salvation is not about what church you belong to. Right. It's not what church you grew up in. Um, it's not how active you are or inactive you are in church. Uh, you could have been the, the chair of all the committees and, and the biggest giver and the most active and all of those things and even have an anointing and be gifted. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're just not saved. Uh, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you just got saved. Mm -hmm. And and the tough part of that sentence is not whether or not we go to church or how big of a hat we wear or how long of a dress we wear or if you wear a suit and tie. The question is, is Jesus Lord in your life? Mm -hmm. Is he actually Lord in your life and what does that mean? Is he... Uh, the one that's making the decisions concerning your life? Or, or is he kind of on the sidelines? You know what I'm saying? Like like a lot of times uh, I hear us say, you know, I know we say it, and we kind of joking when we say it, you know, I'm going to put my religion on the shelf. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to set this Christianity aside, and then I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. And and if if we're doing that, in theory, if we're doing that, then Jesus is not Lord. All right. Doesn't mean doesn't mean that we don't error or get off or do whatever. But if we if you can take it and put it on the side, then that means that He's not calling the shots in your life. Because mm -hmm. clearly He's not saying take your religion and put it on the shelf. Yeah. He's not saying uh, go get this person told or do whatever else. Most of the time He's saying turn the other cheek, right? He, he's saying love your enemies and all of that stuff. And what we're saying is, Jesus, we're going to dismiss you for a minute. Right. And then after we get through doing what we want to do, then we're going to come back and re-engage with you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, saints of God, <laughs> that is definitely not sanctification. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I will never, I will never call into question whether or not you're saved because that has that has something to do directly with you and God. Yeah. You can say the words and you can do the dance and all of that stuff, and and I wouldn't call that into question. But our behavior, the the sanctified behavior, the lifestyle that we live, the things that we do, where we go, what we say, how we act. And those things like that. Those are what we call measurable. Those are measurable. I can see you. You did that. You shouldn't have done that. That's not what the Lord is calling for in these last and evil days. So then our sanctification is measurable. And therefore we can call each other on the came. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I, I can't tell you that you're not going to heaven. But I can tell you that you're not acting right on earth. That's right. I can tell you that your behavior needs to be right. Now, 
Accountability is a big word. And it's not just because of the number of syllables. But accountability is something that believers should do. Thank you for that amen. 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 It's, it's what believers should do. We are there to hold one another accountable. And we should want to be held accountable. It doesn't mean that's always what happens. But it's what we should do. We, should, we are there to edify one another. Mm -hmm. To exhort one another. Yep. To, to teach one another. Mm -hmm. To correct one another. Yep. To, to pray for one another. That's yes, accountability. Sir. Yes, sir. But what am I holding you accountable to? Mm -hmm. I said that's, that's accountability. But what am I holding you accountable to? What the scripture says. That's good. And what does the scripture say? It says a whole lot. Mm -hmm. What, what in particular are we talking about that the scripture says? When we say, I'm holding you accountable. Believe what? in your heart the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. That's a heart, but that's a heart thing. That's the heart thing. And you went, you went, I'm glad you said that kind of, because you went all the way back to salvation. You went to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You shall be saved. You shall be saved. That, that's how we <laughs> entered the relationship. Yes, sir. Now we're talking about what we do now that we're in the relationship. Okay. How I hold you accountable, how you hold me accountable, is what we're doing now that we're in the relationship. It speaks to the expectations that are there for the believer. Or are there any? Any expectations? Yes. The scripture says, be holy as like I'm holy. Or That's I'm an expectation. Holy. So we got one expectation that you are holy just like God is holy. It's me. All right. Anybody else got an expectation? Say, uh huh? No I thought she said something. Uh -huh. Any other expectation? <clears throat> is there anything we should expect of somebody that's saved? Because uh, you saved, I expect what? Well, Corinthians 5 tells us how to walk, that we shouldn't be, um, we should love. Be like Christ. Don't try to steal all. The, don't try to steal all the answers. But okay. but but what what should we do? Even if you're online, you can answer. Tell what what should we be doing if we're saved? Is there is there any difference? Is there anything that should be expected just because I'm saved? Oh, uh, we shouldn't be entangled again with with things that we used to do with is scripture says yoke of bondage. Okay. You That's to one. That's, I, I, I say amen. Okay. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm Anything oh. else? Top of your head. Stop the fruit sinning. of the spirit. Stop sinning. You, we should stop sinning. That's, that's an expectation, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm saved, you should expect that I stop sinning. What else? Love like Christ loves. Don't take all the answers. Don't take all the answers. I ain't talking. <clears throat> Be obedient to his word. Be obedient to the word. Amen. Yes, sir. Be a reflection of God. Be an example. Be a, a reflection and an example. You all are very poetic. This is good. <laughs> all right. Ma'am. None? Okay. I guess what I'm looking for is bread and butter, day to day. If you see me walk down the street, should you know that I'm saved? You might not. The question on the floor is, if you see me walking down the street, should you know that I'm saved? I know some people say that they've seen, they can see the God in you, or they can feel that they can uh, open up to you or something like that. So the, the question on the floor <laughs> is, if you see me walking down the street, should you be able to tell that I'm saved? You should be able to tell that you're you know, and then you might not, I might not be able to tell that you're saved. 
I would say if I see you daily, I should see you. Anytime. At any point in time. No, because uh, people that say you got to wear long dresses, a lot of people that ain't say they got long dresses on. So you can't always tell. You know, you be cheating. What? I didn't cheat. Yeah, you do. You, you do cheat. Because <laughs> I'm asking the question, not the commentary. So you give a commentary to support <laughs> before you answer. <laughs> no. You shouldn't know when you see me that you I'm... You said shouldn't. You use the big word. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking for a big answer. If you see me walking down the street, let's, let's, let's ask a different question. Yeah. If I am a blood in the game called the blood, and you see me walking down the street, would you recognize that I was a blood? Yes. And the colors. How, you would recognize because you recognize the colors. What else might you recognize? Maybe tattoos. Tattoos. What else would you recognize? There's there's some identifying things that if you see a blood and you can tell also that I'm not a crip. Yeah. And you was and, and you wouldn't be looking at the one or the two and say, I'm not sure. Some people like red. And you would at least mistake them for, a blood. for being a blood. Yeah. Right. But you wouldn't see a blood probably ever wearing blue. blue. That's true. That's so true. Right? It used to be like that. Used to be like that. You, you, switched it up, you probably wouldn't ever see that. Okay. They won't even they won't even use the the C uh what the, what the deal? Use the C in the alphabet or something like yeah. that. Uh, you know, all of that it's stuff like that. It's different. Yeah. It, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a distinguishing characteristic that says, I'm a part of this group, and I want any and everybody that sees me, regardless of when and where, to know. Okay. If that's the case, why would it be so hard to distinguish the Christian. You know you brought up a thought that just hit me. You have to bring it up just a little bit. I now. said you brought up a thought that just went through my mind because uh -huh. we know a Jehovah Witness when they come around. We know them. How do we know them? Their presentation. Their present. We can tell by the way they come. <laughs> this is what they, you can tell by how they're talking. Where this conversation is going. Awesome. Yeah. So, so what, I think, well, I forgot what my last question was. How do you tell, how can Christian. one tell that we're Christian? What's the distinguishing characteristics that we should see? <clears throat> or are there any? Our aura. I'm asking. I think that part of part of what's hard about it is what Westbrook said. When we see the Jehovah Witnesses coming, you know how we recognize them first of all by their dress. Nope. Oh, what about the, the, the books and stuff? Well, I, you know, even uh, they're when they're in the street, they they're going in threes. Number one, you you you, you ran past the answer. No, they're in the street. So they're usually in threes or fours in numbers. They're in the street. And they're dressed. I see where you're at. No, no, my point is that they're witnessing. Yeah. So, we okay. recognize the Jehovah Witnesses because they're witnessing. Okay. So. Yeah. One time we went out and went door to door in Walnut Park. Right. We weren't going to uh, be Jehovah Witnesses. We was going to be from Ephesus. Right. But when they saw us coming, they thought we were people Jehovah. thought that we were Jehovah Witnesses because we were in the street. Right. So the distinguishing characteristic is if you see somebody in the street, it's probably them. Mm -hmm. If you saw somebody at the street light and they had a newspaper in their hand, who are they? Muslims. Muslims. Why couldn't we be on the street corner with a, with a newspaper? 
Why, what makes you think automatically that it's not us? You see what I'm saying? They have a distinguishing characteristic that says if you see it, nine times out of ten it's probably them. Yeah. If you saw them going door to door, nine, nine times out of ten it's probably the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Now we got, we got the Jehovah's Witnesses down pat. We got the Muslims down pat. What do the Christians look like? Me. What is that? What do they look like? It's us. That's everyday people. What do we look I think, I see where you at because they built the foundation of what they do uh -huh. on the street uh -huh. as well as the Muslim, but we fail to really build a foundation so when we go out, they see us as Christians. Or is it possible that we just don't go out? That too. Enough. Yeah. As, as, as Christians. Not, not, I'm church of God in Christ or Methodist or whatever. Maybe we're just not out enough. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when people start to categorize us, they don't see us by that. Like, if you see somebody wearing a big hat, <laughs> you think, if you see a lady wearing a big hat, we call those hats the church lady hats, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the church hat. Why, why don't we call that the Muslim hat. But we know the difference. What? Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. We know the difference. Mm -hmm. We know that the Muslim wouldn't have the big hat on. Right. He knows that they'd be covered up. He knows that they would be covered up. Okay. So they have modest apparel. They have modest apparel. And 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 what's interesting about that is that that's in our Bible. It's in our Bible. But. It's not in our behavior. No. We, For some, no. In general, I'm yes. speaking in general. Yes. yes. It's not. It's not across the board in our behavior. Right. And and so there's where we're having our problem, is that our behavior doesn't match the principles of what we say that we believe. Amen. And and. Making our behavior match the principles of what we say we believe is sanctification. Say that again, please. Making our behavior match the principles that we say we believe is sanctification. That's what it means to be sanctified. I'm being sanctified when what I do matches what I say I believe. When I'm saying that how I act publicly, privately, or otherwise, how I act matches what we say we believe. As soon as it doesn't match, it confuses the message. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you saw an a, a Orthodox Jew with a ham sandwich. Oh, no. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? With a big, juicy ham sandwich, mm -hmm. you would say, you're not a Jew for real. Because right. mm -hmm. if you was a real Jew, you wouldn't have that ham sandwich. You wouldn't even touch that ham sandwich. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even have that ham sandwich in your hand or in your car. Right. Because we recognize that that's what an Orthodox Jew looks like. Right. But when it comes down to I'm an Orthodox Christian, we don't have the defining characteristics that match it. Or if we're more ambiguous about what that is. And that is not being sanctified. Does that mean that we have to be perfect? Does that mean that we never fail? Does that mean that we don't fall short? No. But when we fall short, because we do fall short, mm -hmm. and we have fallen short, when we do, the thing is the accountability that says, this is not what I'm supposed to be. This is not how I'm supposed to be. All right. So, so if I get mad, which can happen, right? 
Yes, sir. And when I get blood boiled and mad, and then I start to whoop it on somebody, <laughs> which could happen, yeah. it's probably not a good indicator that I'm the chief apostle. <laughs> it don't look very apostolic. No, it doesn't. Right? right. And, and you know what the world will say, what the people will say when I get through whipping the person? You know what they'll say? And you supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> See, they know what I'm supposed to look like. Yeah. They know how I'm supposed to act. Yes. But I'm not acting like I'm supposed to act. And I'm trying to make it okay to not be who I'm supposed to be. You're trying to make it okay? I'm trying to make it okay when I'm misbehaving. Oh, okay. I'm trying to make it okay to not be who I'm supposed to be. Okay. And I'm saying that as someone that's been guilty. All right. You see what I'm saying? Amen. This, this is not about, this is not judgment, this is truth. If, if I find myself not doing what God has instructed me to do, whatever that is, it's, it's not okay. Amen. Because my testimony is that I'm sanctified. Amen. That's right. Amen. And if my testimony is that I'm sanctified, that means that I'm actually living that way. Amen. I'm, I'm actually doing this sometimes. No, it means I'm doing it all the time, right? right. So, so our 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 issue that we have to repair <clears throat> is our willingness to not live according to the principles. And our challenge with that tonight is we have no idea what the principle is. When I said Joe Witness, y'all said what they do. I said the Muslims, you said what they do. Yeah. I said the Jews, you said what they do. Ain't going to be no ham. We understand that. And, and for the Christian, for the believer, depends on hello. On depends on what denomination you're in. Love. Is, love has got to be the number one answer. That's, that's all that. They love, right? They'll know you are my disciples because you have love for one another. That's 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 scripture right there, right? Yeah. So that's on the list. How you love them. Who do you love? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. What about the people you like? Yeah. What about people you don't like? Yeah. What about your friends? Never mind. What about your family? Yeah. What about your enemies? Love. So, so, so the, the, by this shall all men know that you are my, that you are my disciples because you have love. All right, that's, that's number one answer. Uh, it, it, it talks about some other things that you should be able to see. Yeah. What are some other things you should be able to see to recognize that I'm sanctified? He said you should keep his commandments. Uh-huh. Just one of them, because they, they don't want you to take all the answers. Because okay. cause then they won't get a turn. All right. Keep his commandments. Stop sinning. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Keep it, keep the commandments, right? Yes. What about when you don't keep the commandments? When they're not showing that they, they say who they're saying. Are you not saved? Yes. Yeah. I'm saved. Yes. Just saved. But the world is getting there going to say that you see it. So when, when I don't keep the commandments, I'm still saved. Yes. Yeah. If a Jew eats a piece of ham, they still Jew. Yeah. If yes. a Jew eats a piece of ham, they're still Jew. That's good. That's good. But they would, right? We we hope not. Most cases they would, right? Mm -hmm. So if I if I if I don't do it, I'm still saved, but am I still sanctified? Yeah. You're not sanctifying yourself. You're not sanctifying yourself, but yeah, right. you're saying still. That's a hard thing, Kim. Yes, the, the, your statement is that sanctification is a hard thing. Salvation is a hard thing. That wasn't the question. I'm, I'm going to that. I'm oh, okay. <laughs> sanctification is a hard thing. And uh, yes. Yes, I believe it is. All right. So what I hear you saying is salvation is a hard thing. Yes. 
And sanctification is also a heart thing. You have to ask for it, yes. It's a heart thing. You just, you know, if your heart's not in it, you wouldn't ask for it. it. Okay, so here's a question. Now, this is not a response to you. This is a question because of what you asked. Is sanctification something we receive? Oh, you said sanctification. That is the word I said. That's what I always thought it was. Sanctifying myself, separating myself from. You got to talk a little louder. Me sanctifying, I thought me sanctifying myself or being sanctified was separating myself from the worldly things and separating myself to the things of Christ. Okay. Right. I answered that wrong. Okay. I did answer that. I was giving you a chance to come back. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I was thinking something else. All right. Yeah. What, what do you want to correct? I agree with Juanita. Mm -hmm. So sanctification is setting yourself aside. Um, it's 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 setting yourself aside. So when I when I'm sanctified, when I'm sanctified, mm -hmm. that's that's something I do. Right. Or is that something God does to me? That's a trick question. It is a trick yeah, question because you I'm have just to full disclosure. It's a trick don't, don't you have to walk in? I'm, I'm asking the question, not the commentary, but the question. I'm stop answering. Is you can answer this? Answer this. <laughs> <laughs> you answer the discussion. <laughs> is is sanctification something that I do, or is it something that God does to me? Well, who says that sanctification? Is something that I do by a show of hands. Who says that sanctification is something that God does by a show of hands? Who says that sanctification is both something that I do and God does? And the both have it. Because there's a there's a sanctification that you receive because you're saved. Right. All right? There, there, there's that sanctification. And then there's the sanctification that you live in, which is your behavior that you exhibit on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay? The, what we're talking about today is your behavioral sanctification. Behavioral. Not your, what God did sanctification, which is really low-key salvation. All right? Yes. Okay. Then I got you. Yeah, that's salvation okay. Okay. that does that part. Okay. But your behavior that comes thereafter is the part that you make a choice on a day to day basis. Right. Right. On a moment to moment basis. Mm -hmm. On a situation to situation basis. Right. I could be saved all day, mm -hmm. as we used to say in church. Mm -hmm. I could be sanctified, doing right, living right. And then now it's 7.30 and here I go. Mm -hmm. when I, if I do that all day and 7.30 come and I go left, am I sanctified? Well, that's a sanctified. Boy, y'all. <laughs> Tough on the answer. Tough on the question. Well, I mean, you know, you know, if we go left, we're not acting sanctified. Right. So acting. Uh -huh. But we're still sanctified, I guess, from what you said, like what God does. Salvation. Yeah. yeah. But we're not talking about that one. Okay. We're talking about this other one. Yeah, no, I'm not sanctified. I'm acting like that. But saying sanctification is to set myself aside for the use of the things of God's word, you know. Mm -hmm. If I'm not acting like that, then no, I'm not being sanctified. I think we use that, that it's a good definition when we say we're setting ourselves apart for God's word. That's a good definition. It's, it, it works well in church, but I think it's extra. I think it's just setting ourselves apart because we have a relationship with God. Period. Whether I'm doing anything or not. Because a lot of times people, and I'm not saying that you're wrong, I'm just saying it's the way that we use that language. 
a lot of times people associate sanctified as next level. Right. Mm -hmm. So because I'm the deacon, I'm supposed to be sanctified. But if I'm not the deacon, then that don't really apply to me. I know it, it should apply to everybody, but we don't always apply it to everybody. You know, because I think sometimes we're we're saying it like when we say set me apart to do God's work. Because there's some of us that intentionally, um, let me use that language, intentionally there are people that come to church and they say, I'm not ready to be used by God because my life ain't right. Have we heard that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going up there and trying to be whatever, dot, 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 or, or working in the church like that because I know my lifestyle don't match that. Yep. We, we heard that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, are they correct? No. No, no they can still work. Yeah, you can still work and do what you're doing. You should. Yeah. I mean, you should. Well, talk to me so I understand. What? Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't do the things that are not Okay, what I hear you saying is you shouldn't do the things that's ungodly and do God's work. But some people do. But I'm asking, should the person that knows that they don't do things right mm -hmm. uh, recuse themselves from God's work? No, no. What? If they don't do things right? Yeah, y'all jumping a bit up. Yeah, if they don't do things right. I know, not just, I'm just saying overall, okay, right. I know I got issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know I do stuff that church people shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. So the people that say, I know I'm not doing what church people should do, or I'm doing stuff that they shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Should they go ahead and do the work of the Lord, or should they fall back? Until they get themselves together. So do the work of the Lord. I think that they need to keep doing the work of the Lord. I don't, know. The Lord. I don't know if they started yet. So that's my question. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about before they accept Christ or after they, they say that we step one. Okay. We're talking about believers. Believers. Okay. Anybody that's not a believer, the only thing that you need to be focused on is getting saved. Amen. Accepting Jesus Christ as your we don't even need to talk about what color shoes to wear, nothing else like that. Mm -hmm. You just need the blood to work in your life, right? Yes. All right, once once I'm saved, now we're getting into this behavioral sanctification discussion. Mm -hmm. How I act. Mm -hmm. And in the, the question of how I act, there are some people, you all, I see your hand. There are some people, you all raised your hand a moment ago and say, I know people that come to church and they say, yeah. I'm not going to be a preacher because I know I'm not right. No. I know I'm not going to be up there teaching or singing in the choir or doing whatever when I know I still have stuff in my life that ain't Christ-like. Mm -hmm. So my question is, and, it, and it's a, it's a, it's a it's not an easy question. It's not a trick question, but it's definitely not an easy one. Should those people go ahead and say, forget it. So what? I got stuff in my life. I'm doing what I do, but I'm going to go in here and do the work of the Lord. Or should they fall back and get themselves straightened out first and then do the work of the Lord? Which should they do? Go ahead. I and do the, do the work of the Lord. Who say do the work of the Lord anyhow? So what? You got it. You got it. You know. That's and then who say uh, go get yourself together? Okay. Come on, go get yourself together. 
You know, that's such a slippery slope. If I'm going to continue, is. if I'm going to continue in sin, continue, you need to sit your butt down. We've all fallen short, mm -hmm. even through our salvation. When I've been saved, I have messed up. Mm -hmm. So I, I ask for forgiveness, and I believe God forgave me. I'm not going to continue in sin. If my mind, if my thing is, I just come and confess God as my Lord, the uh, Christ as my Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to correct myself or be corrected, then you need to sit down. But we mess up. You messed up. I messed up. Testify for yourself. Okay. Yeah. I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, you know, you've asked that question before. Right. Mm -hmm. We straighten ourselves up and ask for forgiveness and stop doing whatever it is that we have done. You know, mm -hmm. I still get angry sometimes. But that doesn't stop me from ministering. Right. I just need to get myself together and ask God for forgiveness for whatever I'm angry about or for whatever I've said to somebody. I mean, if, if, you know, and I'm sure, you know, we fall down, but we get up. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this. Anybody else? What else? I agree with her. The only thing that I had to that conversation is that I, I would want to say that we should, they should go ahead and do the work of the Lord. But it's hard to say that because if they do the work of the Lord and then they go and do what they do otherwise and it's not godly, then somebody that comes and sees them, you know, is going to think that it's okay to True. do that and then go and drink and smoke and hold a horn or whatever you do. Right. So that's why it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, but it's when you say, come to yeah. get yourself together, I say to the word, get you. Yourself together. Okay. Anybody else? I was gonna say like her. Say it just a little bit. I was going to, I was piggybacking off of her that yeah. once you do the work of the Lord and you get into the Word and let God change you because we we put that when I get myself when I get myself together I'm ready but without you getting in the Word and let God come into your life and change He'll change you. Right, because we use that excuse that as soon as I get myself together, and you, every time you think about it, you negative and negative, and you never get yourself together. You know. Mm -hmm. Now God came in my life because I got saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now well, get into the word and pray. Uh -huh. And uh, how long I need to be there? Don't know. Just I was word. in the word. You constantly in the word. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you. You grow in your growth is I mean, mm -hmm. because we know somebody that didn't used to get up in front of people right. ten years ago, right? And now you can't sit it down, right? That's growing in the Lord, in right. the Word, and right. she she speaks boldly, yeah. So you, we want to constantly be in the Word, and we change. But uh, you said that that person, if they go keep on continuing and sin. That person that continues in sin, you said, they need to you sit their butt me? down. You, yeah, you, if, if you, you said they need to sit their butt down. If they continue in sin, how I mean, that's how between times? them. That's between them and God. But if they're continuing in sin and they're they're representing uh, representing God, I, I I don't know the when and the where. I don't know what's on somebody's heart, but. So I'm asking a question. Okay. How many times do That's they need to continue before they sit down? Continue, continue. How I many times? I don't, I don't know. They stole the cookie out of the cookie jar. If they keep stealing How the How many times they need to steal the cookie before you need to say, now look, you just need to sit down until you leave cookies alone? How many times? I, I can't count. I don't know what, how many times. I don't know. I, I can't say that that's it. I, all I know is I need to say something. Or if, as pastor, I have said, this is something that you need to take, really take care of. Because well, you're an example. I'm, okay, so you're an example. You're an example. So 
uh, I, I, I go to think about uh, the Jew that ate the ham. Somebody would probably say something to them that this is this is how the Jew would act, or this is how we act if they're not really understanding that. Turn volume up. If they're not understand, I'm already talking. <laughs> if this is not the way, if this is not appropriate, right. uh, so to speak. Um, and then I, I can't say what's on somebody else's heart. Never asked you to. I, I know, but if 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 what I'm asking the question I asked, you probably yes. forgot the question. No, I didn't forget. What the I question. said was, how many times? I don't know how many times. I don't. I, I don't have. I'm, I'm not a judge. Of okay. The time. But but where? How your many statement times would was, you say? I didn't say. It. I don't think so. I said your that. statement was that the person it's that it's continues. I don't think it should be a family. I, I'm coming. I'm coming to you because you had your hand up. Your your statement was if you keep on doing, if you continue, then you need to sit your butt down. That was your word. If you continue in sin. So my question is, how many times do I need to continue before I recognize that I need to sit down versus keep on keeping up? That I don't know. I, I would have to I would have to be put in that situation. I know you're asking me that question, but I'd have to be put in that situation because there's some things that uh, like there's some things that I don't know, you know, because I'm gonna use my son. I, I, if you're looking, I'm, I'm using you because he's he's done this. Um, he was an alcoholic. And I praise God that he's saved. He, well, he's been saved. You know, I was not in agreement that the church used him. You know, you know the story. Mm -hmm. And I was not in agreement with that because it, it gave the rest of the church, the young people, uh, uh, a sense that they could do anything they wanted to do in church. Uh, with some of the things that he did. Not just the drinking, but having a position in church, I really was against that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't my church either. Because it was an example of exactly what the Bible says should not be done. So I'm not saying put them out of church, but there should be a, a conversation. We should have the, the pastor. I believe should, if I had been the pastor, and I have been, would have a conversation with him. Would have helped them do whatever it needed to do to make the correction. Give them the scripture. Let them know that the example of how they were living was um, was not according to scripture and with everybody else saying it, it would say that you can do it you can do it everybody so they have a church full of people who were doing what he was doing and I want to challenge that but I'm going to come please back please challenge to you. it okay. come on I would think when you ask her how many times I don't think there's a time I would think if you mess it up you shouldn't just back out, you know, God saved you, you're going to mess up. Who says how many times, you know? God is going to forgive you. He is the forgiving God, so if I mess up, I'm going to say, well, I ain't going to be saved no more, I ain't going to go to church. I'm going to keep on striving and keep on going because God's grace. He's going to keep forgiving me, so why would I back out and sit down? I, I don't see it that way. See, I'm not talking hold, about... Hold on a second, I'm coming back to you. I've given you a breath. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, my thoughts is if we give up, if we give up uh -huh. on me, uh -huh. that that messy person, who's gonna grab me and help me to show me, help me show me the way to God, or 
uh, 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 get better if I sit down and not do anything. It might push me out of church, but I think growth in anything uh, would help just to grow and stay in church and, and, and grow. And if you, I think uh, my sisters, my family, if they see wrong in me, it's okay, Sister Frazier, to tell me to stop wearing my <coughs> street dress to church. And, and, and not sit me and say, I ain't coming back. She told me this and that. That wasn't my, um, my personality behind it. I was like, okay, girl, you sure right. You're right. But that's not all people. But if I would have took it a different way, I don't know what would have happened. I could have stopped coming to church. But I think growth uh, within my mistakes bringing me back to Amen. church to a building. Amen. Good Didn't you say office? No. You know... I was, I was calling my nigga. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, the person that continues to sin, you know, they continue to continue, you might, that, that salvation might be in trouble. All right, you got to say it a little louder. Though. The person that continues to, to, to sin over and over and over again, keep on, keep on, keep on, that might be questionable. Their salvation might be questionable. They might even say, possibly. It's possible. Okay. All right. Oh. Now we're back. You know, you know, and I'm in agreement with what you said, but when you're holding office in the church and you're continuously sinning, sinning over, over and over and over, and I put you in a position and you are an example for the rest of them. It's just like with the, uh, the Jehovah's Witness preacher, you've already said, they, they go out and witness and there's a certain dress. So if I change that, that's saying it's okay to live, I don't want to say the dress is unholy, but if I am, see, I don't want to put everybody's business out in the street, and I'm trying to be discreet about what I'm saying, but I'm in agreement with if I'm continuously sinning, uh, I'm not going to put you in a position, and, and that's where I was. Mm -hmm. um, put you in a position to be in front mm -hmm. if you're continuous. Because again, I believe that if you're continuously doing that in the, in, in, in the body of Christ, that's telling me that something's amiss in your relationship with God. True. That, that's telling me something's not right. So I don't thing. want you, I, if he continuously, if he got up there and, and cursed all the time and, and was doing stuff and was coming in drunk all the time, and so I'm, I, I love him still, Deacon, I, I love you, but I would pray that you would say something to him mm -hmm. about coming in drunk, about cursing, about doing something lewd uh, in the church because of the position that he's in. Um, I see, I'm confused. But you wouldn't exactly throw him out. I didn't say, say throw him out. out. But you say, should you stop? Should you not? If you say even if you mess up, maybe I got it wrong. Should you just say I'm not saying no more and stop no. doing it? What are you saying? That's not what I'm saying. What you so saying? finish what you were saying. Then I, 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 but that's not what I'm saying. Go ahead. So those things need to be addressed. So, I believe they need things. to be addressed. Two things. First of all, let me answer you. What we were saying is we were talking about being sanctified. Mm -hmm. Salvation is not what's in question. You all said, mm -hmm. I'm saved. That's on the books. Amen. We, we good with that part. Now, because I'm saved, mm -hmm. we have this tough discussion of how am I supposed to live? What, what am I supposed to look like? As, is there anything different in me on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. What we did is we escalated that to the position of ministry so much so that the apostle said, didn't I say office? But I didn't say office. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I said was the opposite. Mm -hmm. I said that some people don't 
engage in the office because they already know that they've got issues. They already know that there's things. So they're not going to even get involved in the work of the Lord because I'm still trying to get my me right. right. And, and because of that, they dismiss themselves or disqualify themselves. And the original question is, should they no. disqualify themselves from the work? Not from heaven, not from Jesus Christ, not from being saved, but should I just excuse myself from the work? Or as Apostle said, sit, sit myself down because I've got these issues. Or it should I continue, continue? And she said, if you're going to continue, continue, then you need to sit down. And the question was, how many times do I need to continue before I qualify for needing to sit down? And 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 that's a that to me is a tough question. It's a very tough question. How do we you have said you used the example when you said the deacon come in and he drinking and, and and cussing and doing everything else like that. And yes, as his pastor, I would say something to Amen. him. Amen. And and you may never hear it or see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But the question is how many times? No. 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 The question is, should I then sit him back? No. I don't think so. Not then. No. How many thens before I sit them now down? Now that I don't know. It, I, I, now that I don't know. Is there, is a there, a, there's a, not a number that says. That is the there Bible. a standard or a range? It may be in the discipline someplace along. In the Methodist church, you wouldn't come in and do that. Okay. Period. Because what? If you're coming in drunk, you wouldn't come and stand before the people. Why wouldn't they? I said in the Methodist church. Why wouldn't Because they? the discipline says so. And so they nobody ever... Not that I know of. Not that I've seen or been there. I'm sure they've come in drunk. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's... Been pity, but not to stay. And they may have been drunk and we didn't know. And you just didn't know. It. Right. So what I was going to say a moment ago is we're making Women, this... What? I just, I mean, he would say if he came in, should he sit him down? If he, you said if you're coming to drunk and just the rough church, and I'm thinking, and my mind went back to the young lady that comes in and she keeps up noise and she's checking. But not one time did he say, hey, you got to go. She's not in office back. either. But she ain't got to be. I well, know, I didn't say it He didn't say no. He just said as a person of God. That's what it sounds like he's saying, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, no, we shouldn't. This girl, let me go back there and say, come on, won't you get out? You're keeping up too much. Well, noise. I'm in agreement with that. I'm in agreement with that. That's two different things. You, yeah. You're still misunderstanding what she means by sit them down. Yeah, She's saying like as a and discipline. Always. No, yeah. as in a discipline. Like you don't function and operate in the ministry. Not you need to get out of the church. You should talk to them if they're doing something but wrong. But I, I want you to understand what she means okay. by sit them down. Okay. It's not saying kick them out of the church. Right. Or mm -hmm. or put them out or whatever like that. Okay. It's saying, in a disciplinary fashion, you in time out, so to speak. You okay. sit down until you get yourself together before you get back up and and operate in the ministry. And and the, the toughest part of that, which I, I'm not saying that we're wrong for discipline. I'm saying what's tough and the question that we haven't answered is, how many times? I think that what what we have is a punitive approach to training. It's 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 we're training through punishment, not necessarily through correction. <laughs> but isn't that correction when I mean it's not up to me, it's up to you as pastor or the pastor or whomever the pastor might be, is to like you said a little bit earlier, I, I I should not know about it. I should not be able to hear you talk, not unless you take me into counsel or another deacon into mm -hmm. counsel, um, if it's a deacon or something, um, or um, whomever you talk to. It, it should not, I should not be able to hear what's going on. And you should be able to talk to them through scripture, just as in counseling, uh, not pointing a finger, but to give them directions, just like you do, you know, regularly in whatever the meeting you would be in, 
to um, share with them some things. I, 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 I remember a time when I had to discipline someone, and they got so angry with me. Mm -hmm. They never stopped coming to church later on, just like our children in the discipline says, man, I'm so glad you did that, because mm -hmm. now I'm grown up. They never left church, uh, just like my kids. You know, they got mad at me. But you were training them. But I was training them. And but what I'm saying is that we have a, I'm not disagreeing with you that you're training them. It's our approach to training. It's, of course. And our approach to training that we're describing is through punishment, not necessarily through uh, whatever other means. You see what I'm saying? So if, if my approach to fixing him is put him in time out, I, that may or may not work for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but that's the approach that I'm, I'm working on. And more times than not, sitting me down didn't change my heart. Sitting me down didn't correct whatever was wrong with me. It may have shamed me a little bit. Because everybody said, hey, why you ain't up? Why you ain't doing this and else? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm shamed because I'm in time out. Mm -hmm. In school, even though I'm not a time out fan, in school, they're moving away from time out. Because they, they say the time out damages the children now. Right? Because it, 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 you're shaming them and all that stuff like that. You're causing them mental health trauma. That's a whole nother sermon. Right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but the thing is, is what is the correction? The scripture. The correction that my heart needs to be fixed. Yeah. Yes. Assuming that I love God and I got saved because I love God and I'm really saved, the thing that has to be fixed is what's making me not behave right. There's something in my life that's that's off, that's making me not behave right. Amen. Right. And I don't know what that is, but whatever that that is, that's what needs to be fixed, not my ministry, so to speak. Mm -hmm. what, where is my heart? Do, do I love God? If I love God, then then you don't have to fix that. You got to fix, well, why are you misbehaving? Why didn't love bring you home last night? You see what I'm saying? So the conversation uh, is for the person that keeps on doing and doing and doing and doing and doing. The, you know what one of the toughest questions for that person is? Why? I noticed that you keep on doing this, 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 and this. Why? They might not even know. They probably don't. <laughs> Counselor, when you go to therapy, you know what you're going to ask them? Why? <laughs> I notice that you keep doing this. Do you know why you do that? Do you, when was the first time you did it? What, how did it make you feel? What are we trying to uproot? We're trying to get to the source of why it is that you misbehave. So the, so the objective here is not just to hit you over the head. The objective is to help you to work through whatever it is that's got to be worked through in you. Now, uh, that is accountability. What we've made accountable, when I said we made it punitive, is that we want to see somebody walk the plank. You remember in church when there was a time, I don't know if they do this in other folks' churches anymore or not, but you remember if you got pregnant? Yeah. They parade you up to the front of the church. And you didn't know about that? Yeah, they, they parade you up to the front of the church and make you beg the church's pardon mm -hmm. for getting pregnant. Now the stupidest thing about the fact that we beg in the church's pardon for getting pregnant mm -hmm. is there's 19 other folks over there in the same mm -hmm. session that's yeah. having sex still. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't care that they have a sex. We care because you got pregnant. Right. And so what we did was shame you for being pregnant, mm -hmm. but we never found out why it was you was having sex. Mm -hmm. That's so 
So what you do now is you get good birth control and you continue to fornicate. You see what I'm trying to say? Still wrong. Or, you, or you have an abortion Still and you continue to fornicate. The, the sin was not being pregnant. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the sin was the fornication which everybody else continued to do and they didn't get paraded. So why are we beating up the pregnant girl? And where was the pregnant boy? You see what I mean? But 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 that's that's purity. That's that's a that's an authoritarian type of a, a culture that says I have to whoop you in the shape. You see what I'm saying? Versus taking the same girl, embracing her, and saying, "What happened?" Well, what were you looking for? Did you find it? You know, or will you do something different? What's going to happen from here? I got pregnant once, and when I got pregnant, I went to my pastor's office and fell out on the floor and cried and snotted all over his desk, and I took my paperwork and everything, and I was ready to sit myself down. That's what I was thinking about. And I, and I, I was going to sit myself down uh, for being pregnant. But I didn't sit myself down for fornicating. Mm -hmm. why, why was pregnancy something that made me want to jump off the boat when I was still going to continue to fornicate? Because you could see what, what you were doing. It was out there. Shame. Yeah, shame. Shame. Not, not love. Shame. Guess what? Shame is not enough. It never is. It never is. It's not enough of a motivator. To, to, it'll, it'll, short term, it'll work. Right? Yeah. But in, in the meantime, you're going to revert back to whatever yeah. your heart. What we want is your heart to change. What we want, we want your appetite to change. Mm -hmm. We want you to crucify the flesh and the lust thereof. Not, not cover it so you don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So sanctification is changing my heart so that my behavior matches what my heart says. Mm -hmm. I believe there are some men that cheat on these spouses that love their spouse. Yep. I believe it. I don't care if y'all don't say amen. amen. I do believe it. Amen. I believe they're doing it, and in their heart, they love that woman. Mm -hmm. But y'all ain't prone to believe it because their behavior keeps saying they want to be with Sally down the street. Right? right? Yeah. Now, why won't he just stop being with Sally? And be with the woman he loved, if he loved her. I said, why won't he just stop being with Sally? Maybe Sally because of his lust, his weakness, his lust. Sally had his heart more than his spouse. Are you sure? Sally got his heart. Sally might be doing something special. Sally might be doing something special, but is she doing it to his heart? Because I said he loved the woman. Yeah, he he loved his wife. That is but y'all don't believe he loved the wife. Who believes he loved the wife? I he loves Sally more. I mean, he, he, he loves Sally more. Not necessarily because my husband was a cheater. And I know my husband loved me. Uh-huh. I'm, 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 yeah. But the flesh was just weak. Just weak. Just weak. So he was just, just there was something was else. Temptation is hard. It wasn't love that was making him go down the street. No. Anybody want to stand with him? Tough on him. All right. <laughs> it's not love to make him go down the street. I, if we can believe that, then we can also believe that we love God, and it's not love that's making us go down the street when we when we mess up. Right. You got to make a decision on what we're going to believe. Because you love God. 
Yes. And I make mistakes. But you, but you went down the street and messed up. But I, I do love God. And, and so I, I want you to say the same way that she said about the husband. I want you to say you went down the street and messed up because you don't love God. He even said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So I want you to say, I want you to admit, confess, tell, tell the truth, shame the devil. I know you I went down the street because you loved the, down the street more than you love God. But I love God more than you understand. I commit. So if you if you can accept that, or if you even want that to be accepted, then you gotta accept the other. Both can't be wrong. If you can love God and mess up, then he can love God and love his wife and mess up. But you don't keep on doing it. How many times you do it? That I don't know. Hey, How many times does it take before you get mad at him and say, stay down the street? I guess as many times you messed up and God still loved you. How many times? When Jesus was talking about it, he said 70 times 7. See, we this is where we, we struggle because we can't understand the grace of God. And, and we're trying to base that relationship off of a really kind of condemning perspective that we want to we want to punish. And in a lot of cases, we feel like we need to be punished. Is it anybody in here that like to confess that we feel like we need to be punished? Mm -hmm. Like our stuff ain't right, and we and we need God. God need to give me a whooping because I ain't doing right or I haven't done right or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, God keeps on loving you. Yes, he does. Amen. Yes, He corrects you. He'll even whoop you, but he don't dismiss you. Amen. He continues to, and he knows better than anybody, I promise he's good at it. He knows how to correct you. Amen. He knows how to hit you where you can't rub. I mean, he know how to, he can straighten you out on some things, right? But, but nothing about his straightening out is condemning. Everything about his straightening out is love. But we want to condemn. We want to, we want to ostracize, criticize, separate, kick them out. Out the house, out the bed, out the church. You see what I'm saying? We, we're missing that loving part of the accountability that we pull the person back. Ye which are spiritual. Restore such a one. We miss that restoration part and, and the divine ability to do so and to forgive 70 times 7 because if you're going to keep on doing it, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then you need to be sat down. Why didn't Jesus say if you're going to keep on doing it, you need to be sat down? Why did he say 70 times 7? If, you're, if, you're, if your neighbor you know, ask you to forgive them 70 times. How many times? <laughs> what well, that's what they were basically asking. What if you do it 70 times? Huh? That really means to forgive them all the time. All the time. Yeah. Continuously. And 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 restore them, right? Like the forgiveness that says that not forgiveness like I put you in the corner, right. but forgiveness that says it's all right, let's keep moving forward. So if he caught the woman that was caught in the act of adultery again, mm -hmm. what would he say? Restore and sin no more. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the question. Would he say, now nah, I told you last time. No, he wouldn't. You see what I mean? He, he, we would anticipate he would say, go and sin no more again. And if he caught her again the following week, at what point would Jesus say, now woman, you just an adulterer. See the, see the struggle? So, so we way down off the, this river here, coming all the way down the road because we got to wrap up to sanctification. Sanctification is fixing my behavior, but it's also accountability. Right? It, it's behaving the way that I should look. It's doing the things that I should do. It's acting the way that I should act. And it's also being held accountable by God and man. Is that fair? We should be able to tell one another you tricked. Mm -hmm. 
We we should tell one another, you trip. Amen. Right? Yeah. It, it should not be a situation where uh, you just let me trip because that ain't none of my business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely your business. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that doesn't mean condemn, but encourage. Right. Amen. Strengthen, encourage. Correction. Read that somewhere. Right? If we abandon them, then we're not doing our part. If we let them keep on keeping on, then we're not doing our part. That's right. We, we ought to be able to, and, and, and maybe our relationship doesn't support that conversation, but maybe that's a problem with our relationship. Maybe our relationship should be a little closer. You know what I'm saying? I had a, a, a work discussion, and we were talking about some people at work that wasn't doing things right. And one of the other supervisors said, what we need to do is we put, need to put some harsh penalty on these people that's not doing it right so we can straighten them out. We need to give them some fines. We need to put some people out. We need to do some stuff like that so we can straighten these people out. And I said, well, the boss is looking for us to use our power of persuasion more than our power of punishment. I said, you got the punishment down pat, but your persuasion is not real good. Your, your solution is off with his head, right? You know, that, that's your solution, off with his head. And you're going to reduce the population heavily because everybody got something that needs the head cut off, right? Amen. But what he really looking for is people that can be influential and, and encourage change in people's lives so that they do change. Amen. Amen. That's right. So that they do stop. Right. What, is it, what is the word that has to be said that makes me actually go and sin no more? That's the ministry. That's the encouragement. I'd like to believe, maybe it's a little poetic, but I'd like to believe that when Jesus told that woman that was caught in the act, go and sin no more, I bet she didn't. Yeah. Because, because her experience with him was so impactful right. that she just didn't anymore. Well, how can we give that experience in somebody else's life? I said, how can we give that experience in somebody else's life? How can we impact them in such a way that they go away changed. Just, just you know. encourage them and love them. Like that did. Just, you know, don't give up on them. Just, you know, don't love them. So in closing, and today is uh, Judy Ryan's birthday. Happy birthday, Judy. Uh, uh, I'm going to use something that we learned. Deacon Westwood loves it. Uh, that we learned in her training in the life work system. And it's called the empathy exercise. You remember the empathy exercise? You love it. Uh -huh. You love it. You the, the, the empathy exercise says, find the thing that's the most sickening, horrible, terrible thing that you see in somebody. If it's the person that you're trying to work through something with or another individual. And when you find that thing that you just can't stand about them, then ask yourself, how are you just like that? How do you see that in yourself? I'll tell you that for most of you, either you won't go to the worst thing that you've experienced, or when you find the worst thing, you'll struggle with seeing yourself that way. Because it's a blind spot in your life that says everything else is okay, it's just them. Everything else is okay, it's just other people, it's not me. But when you can see the problem in yourself, Amen. if you can sanctify yourself, then you can understand why the other person has a problem. I have to understand what's wrong in me. Mm -hmm. I've got to be able to see the beam in my own eye. Mm -hmm. So then I never have to be bothered with your, the speck in your eye. When I get through straightening out the beam in my eye, I won't even be concerned about the speck in yours. Because I'll recognize that my beam is so much more substantial 
than the little thing that you got going on. By the time I want to talk to you about your speck, I'll be ashamed to even tell you about that little thing you're dealing with. I just come and say, pray for me that I can get this thing out of my eye. See, it, that type of empathy will help you to minister to somebody else. Because that same passage says, then you will be able to see clearly mm -hmm. how to get the speck out of the other person's eyes. Amen. When Jesus dealt with people that had issues, when he saw people that were sick, when he saw people that were in sin, when he saw them in whatever they were dealing with, the scripture often says he was moved with compassion. Compassion, compassion and that compassion is the same thing as the empathy that's necessary to help bring change in somebody else. But before you can bring that change, you have to let it work on you. Amen. Amen. You have to let it work on you. Amen. In my famous example with the woman that was caught in the issue of blood, I mean, not the issue of blood, but the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, mm -hmm. he didn't spend a lot of time preaching to her. No. What he did was he ministered to the people who came to stone her. Mm -hmm. right. And what he said was, I agree with you that this woman should be stoned. Whoever among you does not have sin, right. cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. He caused them to have empathy. Mm -hmm. He caused them to examine themselves mm -hmm. and say, is there anything wrong with me that needs to be fixed before I start fixing what's wrong with this lady? Amen. If you can do that, you'll sanctify yourself. You'll live a life that glorifies God because you'll move every day with compassion. When you see people in error, you will care for them and pray for them, not judge them and criticize them. You'll support them and push them and try to help them along because you recognize that you need someone to help you along too. And together, we can grow and we can become the body of Christ that it is designed to be. That is the distinguishing characteristic of the Christian. That is what the believer is supposed to look like. That's how people can recognize the difference between us and somebody else that's self-righteous or judgmental or just hating. That is who we are to become. And that's my prayer for you today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Let's praise God for it. Yes. That's who we want to become. Yes. Amen.